understanding that each and every one, beginning with yourself, is doing the best you are doing with the knowledge and ability you have at that moment. And that includes whether or not you are in a good space. And when you are not in a good space, you can't be a good leader, you can't be a good lover, you can't be a good friend, you can't be a good mother, you can't be a good father or a good, you know, child. So, yeah, the issue of who am I, really, once one has, is able to ask that question and decide, so who am I, what do I want, and how do I get there? And that becomes the journey. Otherwise, we are just working on the fast track to get paid or not, and then we die, and then what, you know? So it's really a different level of existence beyond subsistence. That for me was huge um, realization when I came here. And that's how in the end I realized, I decided, you know, I think this is more beneficial, this is more interesting for me in terms of affecting the human person than just delivering basic services. That is important too, but this is another level at which I want to work. And that's why I do what I do now. And why I still come back to Hookland Hydro to drink for myself. Because although I teach that, I also need to drink from somewhere. And this is where I come when I want to drink for myself. My name is Scholastica Silvan Kimario. I am 74 years old. I come from Kilimanjaro in Tanzania, actually from a village on the slopes of Mount Kilimanjaro. The village is called Maua, which means flowers. And um, yeah, I was the first girl in my village to go to primary grade five, which in those days was seen as um, wasn't worthwhile sending girls to school beyond primary grade four, by which time you could read, you could write. Uh, I was already baptized, you had Holy Communion, you had Confirmation, so you are a good Christian, a good Catholic. And, um, and you know, in those days you were told only Catholics go to heaven, so I was quite firm on making sure that St. Peter's would let me through the gate of, of heaven. And uh, then you were ready to go back home and actually wait to mature so that you could be married and get your parents would get uh, Lobola, bride price, and uh, grandchildren. So, um, but I got fascinated with education. Um, I grew up uh, next in our village, uh, mission school, big mission school, where they, they were growing, grooming priests and nuns. And so I could see German uh, priests and German nuns and uh, Tanzanian priests and nuns and doctors. There was a big hospital and school, you know, primary school to middle school. So I could see that the life at the mission was vibrant, people lived in brick houses um, with window, nice windows and light and nice floors. And I was like, hmm, I want that kind of life. So I realized quite early on that the teachers and the doctors were the ones who had gone to school more. And then the nuns and candidates cooking in the kitchen or in the garden we are less educated, so I realized that if I really wanted to get ahead, I needed to get a good education, and that's how I developed the interest in education. But also, I started liking to know how to read and write. My mother had, her father was a, the first teacher in our village, and um, so every morning, she, he was a religious teacher, of course, every morning she would read to us. The, the life story of the saints of the day. And I would look at her, she looks at the book, and then something, words come out. When I look at the book, I can't make 
anything out of it. I thought, hmm, I would like that. So uh, my mother knowing how to read and write and going to growing up near a big mission uh, actually influenced me, my interest in education. And I suppose from a, an esoteric perspective, I think it was interesting that my mother called me Scholastica, which means the student or the scholar. So I find myself still growing into it. I've done a number of things in my life, um, wife, mother, grandmother, and um, I worked as a journalist to begin with, and then with the United Nations for over 30 years. And now I actually um, work as a mind, body, energy medicine practitioner, which is my link with the Hoogland Health Hydro. I started coming to Hoogland Health Hydro, I think in 1994, when I, I was first working in South Africa with the United Nations Children's Fund. It was really the first time I had a holiday for me. You know, when, as an African from the village, um, when I, every time I got a holiday from work, I would go back to the village. And that, then I have, there I'm a wife in the village. I'm a mother, I am a daughter-in-law, I'm a daughter. So I have different roles. So there it really it was not a holiday. But coming here was the first time I could actually be in my room, um, reflect, you know, on what was going on. It was a very stressful, challenging time in, 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 my, in my work life. Um, you know, South Africa had just um, become a democratic dispensation from the perspective of the government. And um, I was the first UNICEF representative to this country, uh, completely uncharted territory. And uh, there were a number of interesting challenges. And uh, it really gave me a chance to reflect while I came here, but also to to acknowledge that I was feeling stressed in my work. You know, in the kind of uh, high profile lives that we lead, one is not allowed to say you are feeling stressed. You know, if you say that, oh, she's acknowledging that she's not managing and therefore, and especially when you are a woman, and there are not so many women, even now in, in key leadership positions, I felt a responsibility, you know, to be strong and honestly, many people who know me do not know that there's a soft underbelly, you know, to, to Scholastica. So coming here really was a very important opportunity. The thing here about Hoopland Health Hydro for me was, you have this vast, you know, um, expansive land, which is, you know, undulating hills and valleys and plants of all sorts. It's a program. You wake up in the morning, if you want to go to walk, there are people to take you for walks. You actually enjoy nature. Usually I was in nature to, work, to look for food or to cultivate, but here I could actually go trekking, uh, not just for pleasure, but that it was actually healthy. You know, mind, body, spirit healthy. Uh, you come back, I would then do sessions, either meditation or yoga. Uh, in those days, I actually thought yoga was Buddhism. So I was like, hmm, good Catholic girl. Am I really still going to heaven kind of thing, you know? Um, but then I, I actually learned a lot of things about that. And every afternoon, um, there's a session, at least an hour, an hour and a half on, on a subject. Either it's nutrition, um, it is food as medicine, it is... Um, to do with the aromatherapy, healing through sound. One of the greatest challenges I had coming here first was actually that um, Hookland Health Hydro promotes vegetarian lifestyle. And um, I come from a very 
carnivore kind of meat eating, you know, background. And but gradually I came to realize the the link, the importance of even in terms of our dental structure, human teeth are not structured like the teeth of a lion or a cheetah, and there is a reason for that. We don't have to tear into meat. We really are made to eat vegetables, but because of a number of things, um, we, we eat a variety of things, especially meat is, is big on the, on the menu. Um, but then coming here um, and being, experiencing it and seeing the difference, even fasting, the importance of water, Hydrotherapy, what is hydrotherapy, you know? Here you get water for drinking, water for bathing, water for swimming, water for steaming, water for sauna, and it all actually impacts, even if you come just for the weekend. Why am I here at Hoogland Hydro this time? is because um, I recently had a complete right knee replacement surgery. And that is actually from um, osteoarthritis. You know, Dr. Andre is a very interesting, unassuming personality, you know? Um, very humble, very um, unobtrusive. He leads by example. When, when the first he, he talked to us about fasting, I'm like, hmm, fasting, huh? Water only? <laughs> Water only, I mean, honestly, I had, <laughs> you know, hunger is one thing, you know, <laughs> but having to pay to be hungry for me was, was a very interesting, you know, thing. So um, looking at Dr. and talking about fasting and I'm like, hmm, okay. And then he says, you know, he fasts up to 40 days, water only. And he gives us the scientific information in terms of what does that to the body, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I look at him and say, "Hmm, okay." So that explains why he looks as good as he looks, because honestly, you know, um, even today you cannot tell his age. But it's because of the lifestyle, and he lives here. So it's not like he comes, you know, with a big suitcase. And no, he lives here. He will tell us. He took us for walks. And, you know, and I'm like, hmm, okay. So if that's how he looks because he farts, I almost also want that, you know. And then his whole family is involved in this wellness business. In those days when I used to come here, um, his, his mom, you know, may, she continued to rest in peace. I used to call her the Queen Mother. She was so gracious and so regal, you know, and she... She was very much taking care of a number of things and she would make these flowers, pressed flowers. She would take us for walks, nature walks, the slower ones, and she would explain everything, every little thing you meet, including an insect or a worm. In those days, we used to, to have trays. You, you would say what you want for breakfast, for lunch, for dinner. And then when you come, you find your tray with your number and a little pressed flower on it. But Dr. Andre was always, for me, always led by example, even today. And then you go to his office. He has actually the most, for me, the most extensive blood analysis um, system here. Um, and I have had many blood tests, believe me. Um, and it tells you so many things because of what it is that he's looking for. So he's doing action, you know, practical research. The things that he sees, he plows it back into the knowledge that he uses to actually teach the people, the, the clients who come here. And the way he explains what is going on in your blood and what does it mean and what has to be done about it. 
it supports people to manage, you know, supported me quite a number of times I've come here, actually part of it, not only being stress management, but also weight management, you know. Um, then you, you, I live here feeling like a million bucks and within two, three weeks, I'm back in the rat race and, you know, I don't have time to, to deal with it. At least since I retired, my time is mine and I have better, you know, management of my time. And what I have learned from him is how to live not only in balance with nature, but how that is also good for me, you know, mind, body and spirit. He will also give you a choice, you know, he never says you must do this or if you don't do this, you... Plus he has a very interesting sense of humor, <laughs> which many doctors don't have because they don't pay attention, you know, they are too quick to process the next patient, but uh, yeah, it's, um, it's a very different environment. And now every time I come back, the children are all grown up and involved in different aspects of the work. And I can see that this is growing, you know, and I, I really hope that there will be many more centers, you know, which look at the human person from a humane perspective. Because at the end of the day, what you and I bring to the table is actually ourselves. And if the self that we bring to the table, whether that the table is in a marriage or at work or um, in whatever other relationship, the more we bring a holistic person to the table, the more likely we are to actually have peace and uh, stability in our world. This time I have not been as active as I could have been because of the, the knee surgery, but it has been very helpful that um, my greatest focus was on aqua aerobics. Why? Because when you go into the water, and this is warm water because this is winter, when you go into the water, first of all, water has a lot of properties that are very healing. And then when you go into the water, um, although with a damaged, you know, an injured knee, immediately you feel very light. And the water gives you the ability to actually do all sorts of exercises which I am not able to do on land right now. So um, I have really enjoyed the, the training and I, I deliberately took a trainer. Um, not only because I wanted to to learn a number of moves, what, what exercises you do in the pool. But it's also because I wanted the discipline, you know, of one hour we focus, we do stuff, you sweat, you do this. By the time, you know, you're breathing, um, bring, breathing becoming very important when you are doing exercises, not only because of oxygen, but also because you are building stamina and all of that. So this time I really enjoyed primarily the pool. And of course, my manicure, pedicure at the end of it all. Uh, um, yeah, so I'm really happy that I came and I'm very much looking forward to the next time I come here, I'll be able to then even walk because now my bionic knee will be healed and I'll be in a better position to take advantage of the different massages that I've missed this time around. At the end of the day, I came to realize that actually I am an eternal spirit being having a temporary human existence. And, uh, and that, that actually for me was very freeing because, um, you know, as I go, get older, I started to be afraid of death. But when I feel, I think that, oh, so I am actually, um, an eternal spiritual being, just having a temporary human experience. So even when death comes to pass, it's not the end of me. It's actually a transition to, to, to another kind of existence. It's a, it's a kind of consciousness which traverses religion. And I think in different cultures it's understood, especially in ancient cultures. It's just that in, I, somehow in the modern world, we, 
uh, some of us came to miss out on that important knowledge that actually all these material things are passing. You know, there are things we do. We are like actors in Hollywood, you know. These things we do, um, wife, boss, um, president, minister, you know, big shot are really just temporary things. And these are roles we play while we are here. But then for what? And when you ask, who am I? So what do I want out of this life? You know, okay, so I'm a big shot in the UN system and then what, you know? And so, yeah, that has been a very a important part of my consciousness raising. It's not just wellness, it's about who are we, you know, as human beings. Um, what is spirituality? Spirituality is more than, it's not religion, it's really how you and I view ourselves, how we honor ourselves, and how that helps us to honor others.